I'm going to jump in here. We're going to open that up, but before that, we're going to take a look at this slide, which is going to give us a bunch of definition stuff. OK. Probability density function is f of x equals 1 over b minus a. So um, if I have a, and you can't see that because I'm cutting this off. Can I get rid of that? No, I can't. Can I open this thing somewhere else? What if I did that? Did that Went back over here? Did this? Open that up. Now I don't know what page I was on though. And oh, maybe it's the very beginning. Oh, that's just general. That's yeah, just talking about continuous probability functions, but not the not the uniform continuous probability. So these are all uniform uh, examples that you can go through. Um, I'll talk about. We already talked about a little bit of that. We'll talk about it a little bit again. They say the people who wrote the textbook in this chapter and the subsequent chapter. We would present to you the continuous, even though they write continues, it's continuous probability distribution. Um, the, the typo goes all the way through, because they probably just copied and pasted and didn't notice. This is a uniform continuous distribution. This is an exponential, which, which I believe, pretty certain this is not part of the, the course. We didn't, I have not taught it previously. And uh, it's not, doesn't show up in some stuff. From the, this is the normal distribution, which we start on Monday. And um, we want to focus on a uniform distribution today so you can do that work, OK? So here's the slide that I was just on, but I need to get rid of this business-ish. And that's the edge of the spreadsheet for, and let's grab that PDF again. Boink. OK. So when it says here the, the probability density function is that, uh, what? f of x equals 1 over b minus a for x between a and b. What they're saying is if I have some uniform distribution and it's between the values of a and b, and maybe I want a thicker, a little bit thicker maybe, OK? Yeah, that seems hard to see, right? Oops. Why did it do that? Now, it should be a little bit easier to see, maybe. I don't know. The room's pretty bright. I don't think if I choose a different color, it won't be any better. So I just have to make it thicker, I think, which is maybe what I'm doing with the new setting. Yeah. OK? That's a little better. All right, so let's do this. So that's my x-axis. This is my y-axis. Here's my function. And it goes from A to B. This is this this line, this horizontal line is f of x. You would think of it as y equals 7, y equals 3 if you go back to your algebra and and to present, depending on where you're at with all that. <coughs> The area of this we've already talked about is the probability of all the, all the probability. So the area between A and B, but below f of x, must equal 1. So the area of rectangle is equal to 1. Okay? How do we calculate the area of a rectangle? Base times height. So area equals base times height, right? And so the base could be b minus a. So that's b minus a. And the height, this I would call c, we could say that. Okay? Now if the area is equal to 1, that means 1 must equal b minus a times c. 
And so this height, C, is equal to 1 over B minus A. But if C is the same height as this function, I would get f of x is equal to some constant, which is equal to 1 over b minus a. So that's what they're talking about when they say the, the continuous probability function for a uniform distribution is, f of, is the function f of x equals 1 over b minus a. So it's just 1 over that horizontal distance between your two boundaries. Okay. Um, then we have to sort out, and I'll explain why it works, but we have to sort out. So that explains that. I'll try to leave it here because that's seam in there. Um, when we write the uniform distribution, the uniform distribution is x is approximately equal to the uniform, that's why they use u, uniform distribution based on the two numbers a comma b. Those are your two variables, your independent variables for the function u. So, we'll leave that picture up there, and we'll start sorting this out. We'll explain one of these in a generic term, in a generic way. We won't much explain that one. They both require calculus. That's all the calculus. They're just doing integrals, because remember, in your calculus, integrals are calculating the area under a curve, right? So, we just got to do some calculus. We're not going to do it. We're not concerned about us knowing how to do that, we just need to know how to use these two, okay? Uh, note, this V is the variance, so we get B minus A squared, the quantity squared over 12. If you take the square root of the variance, then you get the standard deviation, okay? So let me just explain why this sort of makes sense. This is how I think of it. If I had some value, let's say 7, and some other value, 14, and the probabilities were equivalent, right? I got that 7, I got the 14, their bars are the same. I'm using discrete numbers to express what's going on. And if I said uh, I have 8, and I guess Gauss did this as well. And I did 9, not 9, what am I doing there? 13, right? What's the average of 8 and 13? What is that, 21 over 2? So that's 11 and a half? Yes? And then what's the average of 7 and 14? Same thing, right? 21 over 2, which is 11 and a half. And if I went 9 and 12, guess what? Same thing. So I, as I step closer and closer and closer and closer inside, all those average up, right, to be the same value. So then if I add them all up and divide it by how many of those I have, I have the average, right? It's because they're all the same height. They have all the same probability. So their probability adjustment, like a discrete, like I'm calculating expected value, it would, that, that variable goes away. So I just have to average up the numbers. So when I look at the mean, the calculation for the mean for a uniform distribution is A plus B divided by 2. It seems somewhat counterintuitive, but I'm basically taking this and this, adding it and find the average. This and this, adding it and find the average. Or if you want to think about it, I'm cutting the whole area in half and taking this area divided by that area, or added that area and divided by two. So this, the mean is equivalent to A plus B over two. And as we said, the standard deviation written there is the square root of a, excuse me, b minus a, which again is this length, right? The quantity squared divided by 12. The 12 just seems like an arbitrary number. That stems from doing the calculations for the area under the function f of, f of x. OK. With that information, find my mouse. We can go here and we can look at two different examples. Look at the first two. The age of children in kindergarten on the first day of school is uniformly distributed between 4.8 and 5.86 years. So we're going to take these two numbers, change them from A and B 
to 4.8 and 5.86. Oh, leave that there. OK? So far, so good? Note that they don't tell us the height, right? They don't tell us the value for C because we should be able to sort that out. Yes? All we are, need to be given is A and B. And that's why the function, the probability, the distribution uh, is approximately equal to the uniform distribution A comma B. These are the only two numbers we ha need to describe everything that's going on with this. The only two variables or numbers that we need to describe everything. OK. So what's the mean? Calculate the mean. And yes, you could make your own uniform distribution page in your spreadsheet if you wanted to. I find the calculations to be pretty straightforward, that you don't need to do that. But somebody might want to type it in there, because remember, when you're taking all your assessments, you'll have that spreadsheet available, right? So if you wanted to type the formulas in, you could either just have it as a piece of information, or you can have it as a calculation if you want, right? Type in A and B, and it does all the stuff for you. But that's up to you. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, I was also going to ask for like standard deviation. How come it's specifically 12, or is that just like a? Again, that's from doing the, the, the integral. Gotcha. And so if we want to understand why that 12 is there, we would have to do calculus, which is fine, except I think everyone would storm the room and throw you into the corner. And yeah. It's there in the slide if you want to investigate it on your own. OK? So if you're interested. So hopefully we got something like this, 5.86 plus 4.8 divided by 2. And we get, oh, I got my calculator here. Five point three three. Yeah. Okay. Tizzy and uh, Tizzy and Kimberly have withdrawal symptoms because this is how I teach the teach the other classes primarily with the iPad on the right and the, especially since. Um, Pandemic, right? So 5.33. And then, again, we just need to substitute the values in the calculate standard deviation. So this will be uh, 5.86 minus 4.8. Square that, divide it by 12. Is that 1.06 squared over 12? And I don't know what that is. Not off the top of my head, anyway. Point zero nine three, <coughs> and then I have to square root that. Put parentheses. Point five. Point three zero five nine nine. Ah, uh, point three zero six. I guess if I'm rounding it. Um. And they want us to round it to four decimal places. Is that 5.33, 5.33333? 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3? No, it's 5.33 straight. OK. So then this one would be that, just because of the way it rounds. It's 305, I think 996. That 6 brings that 9 up. It brings everything up to bring the 6 up. So even rounding at the four decimal places, it would be 3060. OK. So that should, does that seem, does that feel pretty straightforward? OK. All right, I'm going to erase this business because we've got to work out these other problems and how we want to think about these other problems associated with this distribution. What is the probability that a child will be older than 5.2 years old? So that really means, let me erase these, this complete area thing going on. So let's say we have this, and that's at 5. Point, let me say 2.2? Two, two? Oh, just 5.2. <laughs> What is the probability that the child will be older than 5.2 years old? So older than 5.2 is this area, correct? Does everyone understand what I mean by that? Because this is somebody's age that's 5.3, 5.7, whatever it is. 
all the numbers between 5.2 and 5.86. So what is the probability of a child being older than 5.2 years old? What do we have to actually calculate? Go ahead, Desmond. Ah, uh, be careful with that. Yeah, we don't need to do the same thing because it's not discrete. Well, I'll further explain that. Does anybody else know? In general, without doing the actual calculation, what are we actually calculating? The area of? Yeah, the rectangle between 5.2 and 5.86, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Desmond said we have to go like 5.1 or whatever and subtract. He's thinking about the discrete values, right? from what we did with the binomial distribution. So we had that situation where, um, I'm gonna draw some stuff here that sort of mimics what's going on with the, with the discrete random variable. Remember I had the one problem where uh, I wanted to know this probability and it gave us this number like 37 and above. But when we had to subtract it from one, we took the, this number, 36, and we subtracted it from 1 from the, so we could find the complement for 37 and above. The reason why you don't have to worry about that digit being 1 less or whatnot for this is because, and we, we addressed it earlier, but you may have forgotten it, the probability of x equaling 5.2 is equal to 0. We talked about it before because what's the area of a line? Zero. Zero. That 5.2 is a line. Now if I said, what's the probability of x being between 5.20 and 5.21? Now there's, there's a little thickness there, so there is going to be a probability. But the 5.2 itself doesn't have a probability, so I don't have to shift over and do all that kind of stuff. Does that help? Okay. So if I just want to calculate that area, this is why, I think the slide had this as well. The slide had this. The probability of, of x being between c and d, notice it has the equal signs. I mentioned this in class, I think last Friday. So it might be, but it was last week anyway. X is greater than C, less than D. It could also be equal to C or equal to D. But remember, I had said that it doesn't matter if it's this or if it has the equal signs or not. Because those vertical lines, those values have probability of zero. So whether you include them or not matters not. Okay? And then it says the probability is equal to F of X times D minus C. F of X equals D minus C. That's because D is the upper value, C is the lower value, so you find the length of that horizontal. In our case, it would be 5.86 minus 5.2 times F of X. Well, F of X is that height, it's the C value. So we actually have to calculate that value. We didn't do it yet, okay? So what is C equal to? That is um, area equals one which equals C times 5.86 minus 4.8, because that's the horizontal times that vertical. So we get C is equal to 1 over 5.86 minus 4.8, which is 1 over 1.06. Good? So this number up here is 1 over 1.06. So if I want to calculate the area of uh, 5.2 or greater, I should say uh, greater than 5.2, that's a greater than, it's going to be C times 5.86 minus 5.2, which is 1, 1.06, 1 over 1 1.06 times 0.66. That's a really bad parenthesis, a whimsical parenthesis. It's 
So 62% probability. Again, the simplest thing, the, way, the simplest way to think about it is I'm just calculating the area of a rectangle. I need the length of the base, so take two numbers and subtract them. Multiply that height. Oh, how do I figure out that height? Well, since the area of the complete rectangle has to be 1, the height is going to be the reciprocal of 1 over that difference, the base. Okay. I never remember that. I always just work it out thinking about this idea. Area equals base times height, which equals 1. Has to be true. OK. Let's do this second, this part D. The probability of the child will be, will be between 4.9 and 5.7 years old. So now I don't have this situation. Oh, too much. Okay, now we have, let's erase all this business as well. We have, we want to know the probability between 5.7, I know this is not drawn to scale, and what was it, 4.9? 4.9? Really, we're much larger rectangle. This is going to be really close to 1, 0.9 or 0.8, something like that. So again, area equals 1 equals base times height. So that's 1 times C times uh, not B minus A. I guess it would be, ugh, let's just put the numbers in. 5.7 minus 4.9. Remember, C is equal to, oh, it's not 1, though. The probability is equal to the area. Oh, and I suppose I should write it this way to be very much more. Whoa, it just froze. <coughs> should write the probability of x between 4.9 and 5.7 is equal to 1 over 1.06 times 5.7 minus 4.9, which is 1.2 divided by 1.06. No, can't be point, can't be 1.2. 0.8. Yeah. Why did I, I, I did the math wrong. He said 1.02. Why did I immediately say that can't be right? 1.2 divided by 1.06 is going to be greater than 1. So it can't, yeah. Oh, what? I didn't even do the math. I knew it was wrong because I, I did other math wrong. What do we get? 0.86 divided by 1.06? 75 percent. Yeah, what's up, Jack? Where's the 1.06 from again? The 1.06 is this height of C, 1 over 1.06. Do you remember how we got that? Yeah. It's the distance between the, the outer boundaries? OK. OK, so this one's backwards. If a child is in the 91st percentile, how old is that child? 91st percentile. So what does it mean to be in the 91st percentile? If I'm looking at the picture. 91st percentile means that they are there. Oops, I gotta be right in the cursor. Okay, they're really close to the top, right? So we wanna know the probability so this is what I would call a backwards problem. In uh, teaching high school geometry, if I say the area is equal to, of a trapezoid, let's say, is equal to, uh, what was it, base 1 
plus base 2 times H divided by 2. Okay? That's, I believe that's area trapezoid. If I got it wrong, that's fine. And normally, or at least the front end of that section you're doing area, they give you all these numbers and you calculate the area. Yes? But eventually, they start doing the following. Oh, the area of the trapezoid is 17. And the, the lengths of the base are 5 and 3. What is the height of the trapezoid? And so I call that a backwards area problem. Because it's, you're not calculating the area, you're calculating one of the dimensions. So that's what this is. This is, I would call, a backwards probability problem. I don't know. Because we're given the probability. We're given the probability of 4.9 to some value, let's call it b, and that's equal to 0.91. Okay? And we want to know what that upper number is. So that's going to be equal to 1, point, 1 over 1 1.06 b minus 4.9. Right? It's exactly like this, except I don't know what this number is. But I know what the percentage is. So b minus 4.9 over 1.06 equals 0.91. Multiply both sides times 1.06. And I get B minus 4.9. 0.91 times 1.06. So I'm keeping 91% of that. 0.9646. Add 4.9. And I get B equals plus 4.9. And I get 5.8646. And did that not match? It's not matching. Did I enter something wrong? Ninety-first percentile, point nine one, one point zero six, four point nine. Oh, because I'm. Do you see my error, Michael? Four point eight. That's why it's off by a tenth. This number. Let's highlight my error because this number. Right? The least the lower number is 4.8. So this should be 4.8, this should be 4.8, that should be 4.8, this should be 4.8. So I'm adding a tenth less. So this should be 5.7646. That's my error. I was inattentive to my 4.8. Got it? Wanna do another one of these and then get out? Brian's like, yes, I'm having a you already I said I didn't have no sleep. Okay. All right, so this time they give you the function. Which the problem sets I've worked with previously, made by other people, didn't give you the function, but 1 35th. So this is, the height of this is 1 35th. The C value, as I've been writing it up there, is 1 35th. Where x goes between 1 and 36. So this goes 1 36. So that makes sense. They gave you the 1 over 35. But if you didn't have it, take 36 minus 1, you got it, right? OK. This is a, what kind of distribution is it? Since the function is a constant, it's a horizontal line, which means it's a uniform distribution rather than a normal distribution. It is a, and your choices are continuous or discrete. Continuous or discrete? Continuous. Continuous. It's all the values in between. Infinitely many values in between. It's not discrete. Okay. If we're defining it as a function, that's all the points along the line are the probabilities, and all the area underneath is, excuse me, all the <coughs> all the points bound the area, which is the probability. Okay. Mean, remember the mean is calculated by a plus b over 2. It's the average of the two n values. So it's 36 plus 1, which is 37 over 2, which is then 
18 and a half. Because 37 over 2 is 18.5, right? Standard deviation is the square root of b minus a squared divided by 12. It's going to be a pretty gigantic number, I think. Relative, relative, relatively so. Good so far. Go ahead, Ryan. So since we started with, they gave us the function first instead of a and b. How would you get thirty-six and? They gave that to us as well. Uh, I scrolled past it, but uh, they gave it to us as well. Uh, yeah. And if they gave us this, they and they didn't give us these two endpoints, we couldn't do anything. They'd have to give us one of the endpoints, then we could find the other using the one thirty-fifth. Am I making sense? And these, the, the, the 1 through 36 represent minutes, and it's the time it takes for the next train to come. We have to understand that context later on when we start asking this stuff, sort of, like this one down here. All right, find the probability that time will be at most 30 minutes, or excuse me, at most three minutes, at most three minutes. So at most three minutes is they're talking about this area, yes? So I'm big on drawing a picture to try to make sense of what they're asking me, OK? So I just drew the 3 in there. And then when they say at most, that means 3 is the maximum. They want the area to the left of 3. It can't go less than the 1. So we're talking about the area of that little rectangle. And you can use the, you can write it out all formally. I will do that. But it is just the area of the rectangle. So this would be the probability of our time being between 1 and 3, which is going to be the area between 1 and 3, which is 3 minus 1 times 1 over 35. So that's 2 over 35. Which should be a relatively small or low probability, right? Is that the right calculation, Anthony? Yeah, I got it. Okay. That's what I, I, that's what I got because I pushed a button. Michael's laughing right in my face. No, oh, you're laughing with me, aren't you? Maybe. Maybe not. Find the probability the time will be between 3 and 11 minutes. So now I'm looking at this. Ooh, that's not the scale. It's not even close. Whoa. That's 11. Still not quite the scale, but not as terribly off as it was before. Now we're looking for that area, yes? So the probability that we're between 3 and 11 is the area between 3 and 11. So that's 11 minus 3, 1 over 35. That's 8 over 35, which is a little bit less than 1 fourth. So it would be like 23, high 23 percentages, I'm guessing. Oops, nope, high 22s. So this G is similar to the 91st percentile we just did. We're talking about looking for the actual value that delineates the 58th percentile. So that's a little bit more than half. So we're talking about like 0.58 is here. So we now want to know this value, right? The minute mark that delineates the 58th percentile. So we want to know probability of 1 to I don't know, which is equal to the area, which is equal to 0.58. So the probability of this has to be 58%. All right, I guess maybe I should write it that way, right? Which is going to be equal to 1 over 35 times b minus 1.
So multiply both sides by 35. So 58% of 35, 20.3, and then add 1, and 21.3 equals B. So at the value 21.3, 58% of the area lies to the left of 21.3, and the other 42% lie to the right of the 21.3. And I didn't mess up my lower bound val value there. How could I mess up one? Find the probability that the time is more than 30 minutes given or knowing that it is at least 10 minutes. What are they asking for there? They're really asking this question. The time is more than 30 minutes, so they want to know this area, right? Knowing that it is at least, at least 10, that you've waited at least 10 minutes, right? So they're actually asking For not the area of this. How do I explain this? Well, let's go ahead and calculate what I think most of you would want to calculate, right? You would want to do this 36 minus 30 times 1 over 35. Because that's that. What is the probability of greater than 30 minutes, right? So, what is that number? So, that's 6 over 35. What's 6 divided by 35? We get 0.17. Notice that it's going to be wrong, right? OK. Why is it more? So what did we get 17? Is that what I said? 17.14? Why is it more? Remember, if it's a give, if, if it's um, probability of 30 to 36, I suppose it's easier to write this, probability of x being greater than 30, right? But it's these two are saying the same thing, because we know we're bounded on the right by 36. But it's given that, given that 10 minutes expired. Who can sort that out? given that 10 minutes already passed. I wrote already gone up there, but already passed is saying the, another, saying the same thing, just different words. I'm trying to throw different words up there to help you sort out what you're supposed to do here. Go ahead, Desmond. That would be the area of um, 16 to 37. 16 to 37. Oh, sorry, I was looking at my own. Uh, oh, okay, uh, you're 10, 10 to 30. 10 to 30. Oh, wait. So you're telling me that it's this is equivalent to saying the probability of 10 to 36, meaning all of this? Let's try it. So that's going to be um, 1 over 35 times 36 minus 10. So that's 26 over 35. I think it's going to be way too big, but you guys tell me. 26 over 35 is way more than 23%, yes? If we, already already, if we already know that 10 minutes has gone by, OK? Let me see if I can do this. 
because I kind of want to stand in front of this. We know that this 10 minutes has gone by. So that left, far left rectangle between 1 and 10 is already gone. We've stood there for 10 minutes. Now we know, want to know what the probability it is for us to have to wait for no, an additional 20 minutes to 26 minutes. We're still going to use this number, but. We've already eaten up that left rectangle. So I want to take this area and make a new fraction. I want to take this area divided by the total area that's remaining. That's the given part. This is gone. This 10 minutes block, or nine minute block, is gone. It's not part of my consideration anymore. It's like saying, what percentage is 30 to 36 of 10 to 36? And it's going to be a larger percentage. So Desmond had a reasonable idea. So I, I think that I think the pink is not coming up on the board very nicely. So so we figured out the probability of 36, 30 to 36, right? 0.1714. What's the probability of 10 to 36? What did we figure that out? 0.742. Okay, now take 0.1714 divided by 0.7428. No? Maybe close. Yeah, because we're rounding. Yes. Because we're, we're truncating the original numbers, right? So um, if I take 6 divided by 35, that's this number, and I divide it by 26 over 35. Essentially, it's 6 over 26. That's what we're getting. Let me get 2307. Round it up as 2308. And I suppose I can do this, right? Because then make the numbers bigger. Sorry. Or if I write it differently here, let's write this a little bit differently. I'm really taking this thing and I'm dividing it by 26 divided by 35. I'm taking the far right taking the, the small yellow hashed area and dividing it by the pink area. Because I already know that the first, ten min, first nine minutes are gone. So I want to know the probability of that yellow area knowing that the, can I do this in white? Will it be clear enough between white and yellow? Maybe. I want to know the probability of that yellow area knowing that the white area is gone. It's already gone. The clock's moved. So the total area really now is not 1 to 36. It's now 10 to 36. So I have to adjust for that. Okay? Okay. I felt that we needed to do that so that you could be able to do the problem set. The alternative was to remove the problem set and push it to next week, but I think I'd rather, you'd rather do this. I think maybe you wouldn't, but I would. And we'll start the normal curve next week and start afresh. Okay? All right. See you on Monday? Oh, the exit quiz is up. It's due. I made it due Sunday. When did I usually make it? Sunday. Sunday? Okay. All right. Let's do Sunday. Let me do this.